dude, should we, uh, should we just, like, have me, like, holding a superimposed umbrella and you throw, like, a storm on this one? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Now. It's the show you're watching, Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise. This is the show where we work together, mano y mano, right? I help investors just like you invest in highly profitable real estate uh, from anywhere in the world. The man I'm working with today, his name is Carson. If you guys want to work with me in the same way I'm going to work with Carson, send my team an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your phone number. We'll talk you through the process because what you're about to see right now, I sent this to Carson probably like two months ago. So y'all can't buy this deal. You got to work with me live. So shoot that email over. Carson, you though. You are a seasoned investor, bro. You, you do investing, you do consulting, you do the whole shebang out there in California, right? But you came to Cleveland because Cleveland is cheaper. We got deals that you can't get anywhere else, right? Our prices are super, super tiny, right? Now, this particular property, side-by-side -side duplex, you said you wanted A to C grade uh, deals in the one to four unit space, right? So I did another uh, two unit burr for you. This one, that's going to be another two unit. And then I got a single for you after this one. This one is cool. It's got a little bit of water damage. Uh, so we're going to be able to definitely utilize that to our advantage. I actually looked into this for another investor previously, so I want you to see that footage now. This is a water-damaged house, right? 3615 Denison Avenue, Cleveland, 44109. Just hit the market today. One day on the market, listed at 69000 900 as far as photos the listing agents some cats out of some company called real estate corner They haven't given us any photos other than the exterior, right? But this is a side-by-side -side duplex, okay? Each unit three beds one bath We actually currently have tenants in there both paying 700 a month. So this thing brings in 1400 a month currently that's 16,800 now truth be told uh, three ones that are side by sides like this, we could actually get that rent up to 850 a unit. So there's definitely some meat on the bone here. But right now we're just gonna go based off of what it's currently bringing in, 1400, right? If you take that 1400 under normal circumstances, I would anticipate approximately $700 a month being spent. Now that's not 700 every month, right? This is an illustration. Uh, of long-term projections of what this property would average out to, right? So that'd be a net return of $8,400. And that's also calculating for things like capital expenditures, vacancy and non-payment, repairs and maintenance, right? I have eight forty dollars every year being allocated to each of those three things, right? So that's money that goes in your pocket until you need to actually utilize it, right? Like roofs, they last 30 years, cost about seven grand hot water tanks last about 15 years cost a grand to replace furnaces cost about three grand to replace they lost they last 30 years right these are the types of things that we're talking about when we're talking about capital expenditures repairs you don't do a lot of repairs in between or like why tenants are there right most of your repairs are going to happen at your turnovers things of that nature right and part of the game part of investing is evicting motherfuckers right you said yolo right you said you're interested in uh, you don't mind risk, right? Because you're, you're a young guy, you got a lot of W-2 income, right? So, you know, you buy a house in this neighborhood, we're going to evict some motherfuckers, dog. That's that's going to be part of the game. This is probably like a high C, low D class neighborhood. Uh, so I like to go Section 8. But just so you know, it's right next to a place called Metro Health. They're investing a billion dollars into the the neighborhood. So look into that. I got some links to it in the show notes below, right? So I think we're going to possibly have some appreciation over the long term here. You invest a billion dollars into a low-income neighborhood, good things are going to happen, okay? So all that stuff sounds good thus far, right? But I told you at the beginning of the show, we're talking about water-damaged properties, right? Here is the issue. Here is the scenario we are dealing with, which is why the property is priced so low, right? Like, first of all, 69000 for something like this that could potentially bring in $1,700 a month in rent, that's insane, right? You would obviously, everybody would buy that, okay? Of course, there's going to be a gotcha, y'all. Here's the deal. Here is uh, building code violations from the city, okay? Now, the city went in and they cited all this stuff. And just so you know, just being completely transparent, right? Uh, there's something called the point of sale uh, violation system here in the Cleveland market. Pause this video, show notes below. I got a video that explains that. 
going for it. I'm assuming y'all know what I'm talking about. Cleveland proper, which is where this city is, or where this property is, the actual city of Cleveland, right? We got the Cleveland market, which y'all come here for, but there's a shit ton of little suburbs and stuff, right? A lot of them have the point of sale, which I explained in that video, okay? Cleveland itself does not have a point of sale, so do not get this confused with the Cleveland point of sale, right? But Cleveland has went in and they've issued several violations on this property. And Andy, if you want a PDF of this, of course, we'll send it to you, right? They've issued all these interior violations, all result, uh, related to water damage, okay? Water damage in the bedroom walls, shit like that, okay? So here's what I'm surmising. The roof is fucked, okay? And it's been leaking for a very long time, and we're dealing with some type of slumlord who has not fixed it, right? Because the city wouldn't know about any of these issues unless the tenants actually complained to the city, right? So I think we got two tenants in this property who are sick and tired of dealing with the slumlord who's not fixing the roof. So because of that, I have placed in here a renovation budget of $20,000. Approximately $7,000 is going to go towards us putting a new roof on this property. And then the remainder, $13,000, is going to go to clear off all of these violations. Because of that, I think we could negotiate the deal uh, much harder and try to pick it up for an even smaller price of $55,000, right? So if we pick it up at fifty-five, dollars put twenty dollars into it to get all the violations clear and do the right thing and actually be a you know a quality real estate investor quality landlord we should be all into it for seventy five thousand but this ain't a charity dog we're gonna make some money on it if we're all in at seventy five thousand if the current tenants stay at their current rent not even talking about turning it over getting to eight fifty tenants and i'm talking we just keep the same tenants in there why wouldn't they stay the slumlord sells the property and somebody reasonable comes in and fixes the the health and safety issues that's that's no problem so at 75k investment that's an 11 2 cap and here's where it gets good right you have a lot of cash you got 165k in the bank it's all fucked up so we're not going to try to get it with a loan up front we're going to try to buy it cash right which is also going to help me try to beat that price of 69 all the way down to 55k right because we know the house is fucked up cash offers are going to be strong we could probably you know snag it away from that slumlord we do that drop 55 to acquire the asset 20 to get the asset where it's supposed to be be reasonable i believe when you go to refinance it i'd probably uh give it at least six months to season right? The longer you wait between your initial acquisition time and your refinance time, guys, the more likely that the appraiser will, use, will probably give you a better appraiser, right? The more likely they're going to value what the house is currently like. If you, if you guys do these appraisals on these Burr deals, which by the way, that's kind of what we're talking about now, guys, Burr. It's a Burr strategy. It's very popular. It's an acronym, right? It's a B and four R's. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, right? This is essentially what we're doing here is a bird deal, right? Uh, I know a lot of you guys are interested in those types of deals and they're very popular, right? But just so you guys are aware, if you buy a property for like 50K and then you want to get it appraised like 25 days later, you know, you're going to have a harder time getting that appraisal up to where it should be, right? Like you could probably easily sell it for your target ARV, but like an appraiser, if you just bought it, previously like literally like 25 30 days ago the appraiser is going to weigh very heavily on that previous purchase price right so the further away we can get from our original purchase when we purchase it under fair market value guys the less likely that is to weigh on our appraiser so that's food for thought right are you a lender if so Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. But Andy, our target goal, get this mo motherfucker to appraise at 90K. We get this son of a bitch to appraise at 90K, brother. They're going to lend us back 75% of that, meaning they'll give you back 67500 of your original 75K investment, meaning you only end up stuck into this deal with $7,500 of your cash. After you pay off your mortgage, this thing still nets you almost $5,000 a year, which would be like a 66.5% return, right? 66.6, .6, okay? So that, my friend, is the type of stuff I want you to look at, right? Something like this. We're looking at distressed assets, right? We're dealing with stuff that's got a lot of problems, right? A lot of issues. 
We got a slumlord. We got existing tenants. The existing tenants have already complained about the slumlord, went to the city, right? So, you know, it's a whole mess, right? But I've given you a, a very easy and simple path to making a lot of money with this deal, right? If everything goes how I want it to go, that's a 66.5% return, dude. That's awesome. Move on, stack more deals. Now, just so you know, right, it, it's not necessarily guaranteed it's all going to be smooth, right? These tenants are, you know, adversarial to their current landlord. It's fair to say these, these guys probably hate landlords, right? So, you know, it's very possible uh, during the process, like in the first year or so of ownership, maybe we got to evict one of these folks. And if we do that, we're probably looking at like five to seven to, you know, $10,000 or more in additional costs to renovate their unit, right? Because, I mean, they're living in a water damage unit, which we're going to fix that. But I'm sure, like, it's probably not that nice. Why we're in there, we'd probably want to do the kitchens and the baths. But if that happens, cool. We got more meat on the bone because then we'll rent it out to a new Section 8 tenant at the market rent, which is eight fifty, right? So this is the type of stuff that I think would make more sense, right? Your previous video... You talked about flipping some houses, which, you know, we could do that too, right? We could do that, but I, I think stuff like this for the long haul is going to be better for you, right? Because you get that continued cash flow. And now, if this goes as well as uh, projected here, a 66% return, right? That's really good. That's really high. You didn't get 100% of your money back, but a lot of the people telling you guys you're going to get 100% of your money back, dude, that's pie in the sky, right? That In the real world, that's probably not that practical. This is one of the better case scenarios. All right, welcome back, Carson. So let me know your thoughts uh, on all the numbers and things I calculated. A little bit of background for you, though, since I did that analysis. That other investor, at the time, he was interested in it. Uh, I had talked about a target price point of 55 k in that footage. And uh, that's the offer we actually presented to the seller. And the seller said no. They were not feeling the 55K offer. And then shortly thereafter, the property uh, went under contract with another buyer. I was involved with it, you know, the seller listing agent. They they, they, they must have, uh, you know, sold somebody else who was bidding higher than my guy. My guy was at 55K, right? So it comes back on the market. I talked to the uh, listing agent again, and she's like, yeah, 55K. I was like, yo, I'm a previous offer, 55K. She's like, 55K is not happening, dude. They got no interest in that. So, um, you know, as you saw the breakdown at 55K, uh, we could try to submit 55 again if you'd like now that it's back on the market. Uh, he didn't want my other guy, you know, I don't think he wants to go up or whatever, but uh, we could do 55K, but I think they're going to tell you the same thing they told him, right? It's not going to happen, not interested. So uh, if you'd like to, to go up, I think you'll have a better shot here because they they were pretty clear that, like, they're not interested at 50K then. They weren't interested in 50K now. My dude, he's not interested in getting it higher than 50K. So um, 55K. So my thoughts are maybe you squeeze this one up. If the deal works for you at like 60, 61, 62, we might be able to make something happen. I really do dig the fact that it's a side-by-side. -side, so I think this is a pretty gnarly one to keep in the portfolio long term. So let me know your thoughts, Carson. Let me know if you want to make a bid on this one. Just reply to the private email. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch gears for you because you said you wanted anything one to four units. So the next one I got for you is actually a single family home which we're going to talk about now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.